Hi, and welcome to another episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. In this episode, we're going to feature this Cummins powered Stage 2 restored FJ60 that's right behind me. And we're also going to take you in the shop and show you some of the tips and tricks that we've developed over the years. So stay tuned and keep watching. trying to show uh, our viewers like some of the ways to do things uh, like tips and tricks and secrets of the trade and we came back here and we found you doing something that is actually a really cool secret tell us about it okay what I'm doing is I'm laying out some masking tape on all of the seams on this tub uh, these tubs are put together with various sections and components of sheet metal and they've got a butt seam uh, anyway, that's a place that we need to fill in with a seam sealer product uh, in order for appearance and to replicate the factory look. Uh, so what I do is I lay out all the masking. Um, I'm doing three layers of tape to give a little bit of build to the seam itself. Uh, and then once I'm all masked up, I'll get the seam sealer out and apply it. Uh, you kind of have to squeegee it off for kind of a smooth finish on the top. Then you peel off the masking tape carefully and clean up any extra that you've got on there with thinner and you're good to go. So the secret, it's easy to see the tape from here, but that three layers, right? One layer on top of the other on top of the other so that the seam sealer stands out a little bit. It, it allows for it to build up on there. Yeah, and all of that's designed to replicate the factory appearance. Uh, they had a very similar technique. They must have used a thicker tape or something, but they had a little bit of build. You could see a little edge on the seam sealer, and we very diligently try to replicate that as best we can. It, when you look at an FK40 that's been restored um, somewhere else, one of the dead giveaways, when I'm looking at a Land Cruiser uh, for somebody on the internet, one that's for sale, dead giveaway of a bad restoration is no seams. In other words, they got rid of the seam sealer, maybe they welded the crack or they put body filler even worse over the crack and there's no seam there. And you'll see that all the time, especially on the rear sill. Uh, there'll be no seams and you know that somebody's been in there and doesn't know what they're doing. So. Yeah, the, the last thing you want to do is try to fill that in with some type of body filler or uh, inflexible product. The seam sealer we use is rubberized. It's also catalyzed so it's chemically hardened. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, give to it and flex so it won't crack out. And that's what we're going for there. 30-year uh, longevity. So one of the hardest pieces of a Land Cruiser to restore correctly is the top. They present all sorts of challenges. One is that the fiberglass, if it's damaged, takes a lot of work to fix. That's not what's wrong with this top though. This top has rain gutter issues. So the rain gutter, um, are, they're often bent and they're almost impossible to straighten when they're still attached to the fiberglass. You have to take them off the fiberglass to straighten them out. And they're held on with a special kind of rivet called a buck rivet. Uh, buck rivets look like this um, when they're new and they need to be hand formed to uh, mimic the factory rivet. So this right here is what they look like um, after they've been formed. And you see Clint has uh, reattached some of, uh, you know, this one here and this one here and this one here are new. And so he's taken uh, this buck rivet and a special tool that he made right here that sits there at the appropriate level. And then he hand forms the top, this with a hammer and this other special tool. All this is is 5 eighths uh, hot roll round stock. And he's kind of tapered the end uh, with a grinder and then drilled that little hole there. And that's just gonna, he backs the whole thing up with this. Anybody could make this. Just set that like that. And then the buck rivet's poking through. Take this tool, hammer it down, all right? And work that until you get a perfect looking rivet. So these are available, these buck rivets are available even just off of Amazon, anywhere really. They're aluminum. And uh, that is a super cool way to do it and make it look factory. 
And then, speaking of other ways to do something, Clint's removing the front. So let's go up and talk to him about that. So Clint's doing some top repair. Clint, I already showed him your cool rivet tool. Uh, what are you doing up here? Same thing, I'm gonna have to take this off. It's just all wavy, and there's really no way of getting that straight on there. So I'm just gonna pop it off, put it on my table, flatten it out, get it all nice, and then put it back on and re-rivet it. And, and with those same rivets. So yep. if you sight down this, you're gonna see that that's wavy. And no matter how hard you, so right here, it's low or high when the top's right side up. And no matter how hard you hit this, you're never gonna get it to move. Number one, you're gonna damage the fiberglass. Uh, and number two, because it's attached to the fiberglass and it has a memory, it's just gonna bounce up and down. and It'll never actually get straight. So the only thing to do is what Clint's doing. He's gonna remove this part of the rain gutter, flatten it out, put it back on. This thing will be close. This one's in better shape than most, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, totally. No, no yeah. rust. Yeah, we usually have to replace these channels. Yeah. If you do need to replace your whole rain gutter, it's available from Cool Cruisers of Texas as a kit. It comes in four or six pieces, yeah. uh, mainly for shipping, and so you do have to assemble it. Um, you know, you take your old one off, you assemble the new one, test fit it, and then hammer it together with the correct rivets, and you can replicate that factory look. One more thing I want to talk about that's pretty important when you're restoring a top um, is that it needs to be painted like this, apart and off, and then assembled to the top with the new weather stripping. That weather stripping is available uh, from Toyota, and it's black, and so you'll have that body color to black contrast to white top contrast. And if you ever see a Land Cruiser that's been restored, and the weather stripping is the same color as the, either the body or the top, that means it wasn't taken apart and, and, uh, and repaired properly. This is the way to do it. Okay, yeah, it's gonna be nice. Thanks, Clint. We're actually a couple of days late um, on this. It's already been repaired, but I'm gonna show you what Clint did to fix this fender because it's really a cool way to do it and really the only right way to do it. Aftermarket fenders don't fit, and so we will go through just about anything we have to to fix an OEM fender. This is an OEM fender from an 82 FJ40, and it was in horrible shape with rust, um, but again, it's worth the time spent to fix the OEM fender because at least when it's done, you know it's gonna fit. Uh, so this had rust holes all over. There was, a, there was a rust hole here, and there was a rust hole down here in this corner, and there's always a rust hole up here in front behind where the light goes on, and uh, there was even a rust hole on the inside of this where um, this bracket, uh, which holds the smog canister, um, any, any place where there's two pieces of metal together, that's a place where moisture can, can be trapped. Um, but this one had pretty significant rust both here and behind this support channel. This is what mounts the fender to the vehicle. So on about half the fenders we repair, Clint actually takes this off. We drill out all the spot welds to remove this support channel uh, because again, you get rust up here between the support channel and the fender and down here between the support channel and the fender. And so this comes off and then the, it's easy to do a flat sheet metal repair after that. And then um, it's easy to line this back up too because you drilled the spot welds out. So you have all those alignment holes to, uh, to make sure that you're putting the channel right back in the same place. And you can see here where Clint has spot welded this back in place. Um, there's a coating between the meat pieces of metal uh, that he uses to treat both the back side of the support channel and the front side of the fender. So it's, uh, there it's a weld through primer to prevent rust from forming in there again. A lot of time and effort and love went into this fender, uh, but it's cool, it's the real OEM fender. It's gonna go back on the rig and uh, look beautiful for years and years and years to come. Clint has all the tricks. The guy's a, he's a magician with sheet metal. This is just regular axle teardown. Nothing too secretive about this, except for your axle's on a special table, which you designed. Tell me about your table. This is our top secret axle part. <laughs> Uh, as you can see, it has a swivel base on it. If you look at our top, you can tell you can't roll stuff around in here too easy. A lot of times we'll have to pull an axle out of a, a 40 or 60 over here and roll it to our wash bay. This allows me to spin the axle. So I can roll it through a multitude of $100,000 vehicles that are finished without scratching anything. We also use it to, to install and remove axles out of the vehicle. We'll take the vehicle and 
lower every lower the axle right into my perch holders here. Take the weight off it, undo the springs, and I can roll it right out. It makes uh, switching an axle, a leaf springs, or a lift kit a one-man job. It saves a bunch of time. I'd say this part is cut two and a half hours off every axle job I do. But this is real nice because especially when you do a front end, you can pull all your parts down, set everything right down in order on the cart, and we roll it right out to our wash bay. We can pressure clean everything. Everything's in order. You're not mixing anything up. It just adds a lot of speed and precision to the process. What are you doing, Zach? I'm putting on receiver hitches on the end of this so we can make either mounts or Tool. jigs, other tools to slide in and take off. I thought you were going to haul this behind your truck. I mean, if you want me to, I could. So, no, because you can put a vise in there, but sometimes the vise is in the way if you're building a bumper, so you can just take it out. Take it right or out. tubing notcher, jig for bending things, one in each corner. Whose table is this? This is mine. I get a build for coming back. We got a new, Zach was once a um, shop helper, and now he, and he went to fab school in California. And they kicked him out of California, <laughs> and he's back. So, uh, he gets his own table, but he has to build his own table. Most of the people have to do it off the clock. But you were working on it for a while off the clock. Half on the clock, half off the clock. It's called paying your dues. Um, All right, what are you doing, Brian? Uh, I'm putting foam insulation on one of our new body racks so that when we put painted parts or primed parts on the rack, it uh, doesn't scratch things and keeps them in perfect condition for final assembly. We have these, like eight of these, and we need about eight more. The problem is they take up a lot of room, but we need them, huh? This will hold every body part of an FJ40. There's a lot more you'll see in the body shop. This was what Zach made before he got to make his table. Yeah! That's a cool way to organize body parts for any vehicle. <laughs> One of the secrets. Resurrection Land Cruiser. Let's go find some more. So a couple of the FJ40 body tubs that we've seen in this video have a six by nine speaker right here. So we accomplished that by moving the axle back and moving the wheel back, the wheel well back. Uh, we're not moving the axle and the wheel well back just so we can put a speaker here. We're moving the axle and the wheel well back for wheelbase and for a longer rear drive shaft. But that gives us the opportunity to put a speaker right here in the front of the wheel well. On FJ40s have almost no place to put speakers. And you know, those clamp on boat speakers and things like that just aren't savory enough for us to use them in our restoration. So we do have our standard speaker mount for the rear of the tub. Uh, that's hard to get in place when you have a roll cage. And so um, if, when we have the opportunity, we're moving the wheel back anyway, we'll put a six by nine speaker mount right here. We've got it filled in in the back and then we'll seam seal that just like Matt showed you and then vortex the underside of the tub so we have a nice uh, sound chamber there. And uh, that's a cool way to get, if you're gonna do a whole restoration, it's a cool way to get uh, cool speakers, six by nine speakers in your wheel wells. So the secret to a good paint job is we, uh, we, we, we run, uh, we ground every vehicle to the roof of the paint booth with wires uh, wrapped in paint. No, that's not it. The, the, the secret to a good paint job is uh, an umbilical cord artery of primer flowing from the ceiling down to the painted area. No, that's not it. <laughs> what on earth is this? So uh, I would have wasted time to take these wires out from the firewall when we were painting this. This is just an engine conversion, so that's how we do it. You gotta wrap them and tape them and tape them out of the way. So we would have literally off. added uh, eight hours to this customer's uh, invoice had we removed the wiring harness through the dash, pulled the whole dash out, and pulled the whole harness out. And it doesn't need to happen as long as you can get a nice paint job. Yeah. So this is Eric's genius way of keeping those wires out of the way. Out and this engine compartment's gonna look sweet. That's nice white. We're gonna have new Cummins in it. 40 minutes, yeah. half hour. Ah, so we'll probably get this white before the end of the video. Should be, yeah, awesome. 100%. Yeah, good tip. Yeah, as soon as you guys get out of here, I'm painting, so. <laughs> so, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, man. Here's another quick uh, cool tip. 
this Tuffy box, this is a 83 FJ40. So in 79 through 83, they had a rear heater between the seats and a small plastic uh, console on top of that. So if you wanted to put a Tuffy box in here, it's not gonna fit very well with the rear heater unless it's this tall, right? You don't want that. So what we've done is we've taken a Tuffy and we've uh, cut the floor out of it and uh, raised the floor up to about this level. And you can see that um, if you open this up and get the camera angle down in there. Um, so there's not a lot of space in there, but it's still some space and a good armrest. But what we did is we dismounted this to the rear heater and the control uh, for the temperature is way up in the middle of it. Um, so Alex has on that plasma table you guys saw earlier, made this cool back cover and then he's made an extension for the heater lever so that you can still control the temperature uh, and from the rear heater and you get that heat flow through the back. It's a cool way to have your Tuffy box and your rear heater too in a 79 and newer FJ40. We're talking about secrets of uh, how things are done so cool here. And one of the reasons why our fabrication is so cool is because... I just took my hands in hard water. Yeah, that, that, and because these guys use pretty much all flat steel to make everything. And what do I mean by that? So lots of times when you see things that are hand fabricated, you'll see materials like angle iron and channel and square tubing. And uh, while sometimes we allow square tubing, angle iron and channel aren't even allowed on the property. In fact, like I would divert traffic. If there was a truck carrying angle iron and channel, it's not even allowed to drive by uh, because angle iron and channel is that bad to use as a fabrication uh, for cool things anyway. I guess if you were building a bridge or, um, a uh, flatbed for your old farm truck, you could use it. But uh, to do things really cool, you need to build them out of flat steel. Um, you need a plasma cutter for that. Uh, not necessarily a really fancy one that we've got, but you need a plasma cutter and some uh, imagination and some ingenuity and a grinder and reamer. Um, and you can make really cool things. So this is uh, just a battery tray. And it's a relatively complicated looking battery tray, um, but it doesn't take very long to make these. This is uh, for the FJ40 uh, that we make with all the Cummins R2.8s. And it looks fairly intricate. It bolts to the frame, um, here to the side of the frame, and here and here to the top of the frame, just like a stock FJ40 battery tray would, um, on the same side, but just a little bit further back. And there's a reason for the shape. Uh, first of all, the exhaust of the Cummins comes right through this. So he's got this radius here for the exhaust to come through. And then there's a bend here and another uh, cutout radius area here. And that is there for the intake tube to go up to the intercooler. So this uh, is in the table. Uh, we just cut them out um, and they fold them up, weld them together. I've got some cool weld nuts here uh, to bolt the factory battery tray that you can still get from Toyota down to and then you've got um, a cool looking battery tray built out of flat steel uh, like I said just about everything starts out flat this is an amplifier and subwoofer mount that goes underneath the seat of a 73 through 78 FJ40 if you guys are familiar with what that looks like it's gonna sit just like that and then the rails of the seat are gonna be over it and then underneath it um, on, on uh, these little towers and hold in those bolts goes this amp and subwoofer. So it's just a cool way to take something flat. Looks like that goes about like that. And I think this goes about like that. And that's, this is upside down. So these will hang underneath the seat, but something built out of flat steel. In this case, looks like a 16 gauge. Really cool way to hold two things up and out of the way. Doesn't take too long to build that either. So if you wanna take your Land Cruiser back to an OEM look if somebody has cut it out for flares like this poor one has been uh, horribly cut out for flares um, there's a great solution to that this is a wheel well uh, replacement panel and it's made by real steel cruiser parts RSCP on eBay and what we do we use these so much we just position these and cut around them do the appropriate welding and body work and then uh, just like that, you can get your factory wheel well opening back and it adds so much value to FJ40s and makes them look so much better than anything like this. It's a great solution. Thanks RSCP for making these. So earlier in this episode, we talked about Randy's axle stand and how he likes to use it. And this is a result of, of what it helps him with. Check out this axle. It's completely reassembled and it's beautiful. Going under this body off restoration, 
And I noticed, Randy, that you uh, customized your stand. Yeah, I had to give it a name. What? What's that mean? Well, it means making axles great again, 2020. <laughs> this is where all the magic happens. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can all agree that steering is important. It's nice to be able to point your rig in the direction that you want it to go. And that's why some steering modifications are just not okay. This is one of them. This is a homemade pitman arm. It looks to be made out of maybe 5 8 flat stock and there's some welding where they welded the splines out of a different pitman arm into this so that they could have a pitman arm that's not dropped. Guess what? People make these. There's a couple of companies that make a Saginaw pitman arm that's flat, that's a lot safer than this. No homemade steering components, please. Just stop it. So we shot the first half of this episode a few weeks ago, so you might have seen this Land Cruiser in the shop before it was finished. But now it's finished, let's check it all out. This Stage 2 Restored FJ60 with a Cummins R2.8 and a 5-speed is like a staple of what we do here. We build uh, trucks just like this all the time, and it's because they are so darn functional and nice to drive when they're done. Let's look it over. Starting with the inside, you might have noticed that this FJ60 doesn't have any carpet. That's because the owner wants to use it as a fishing rig and have the ability just to hose it out when he's done at the end of the day. So we lined the interior floor with our two-part polyurea spray liner called Vortex. We also built custom aluminum cargo panels for the rear and Vortexed them so that there is a hardy place for all of the gear. The restoration of this FJ60 is what we call a Stage 2, and it's our most common 60 series restoration. Stage 2 is a glass out, doors off, hatch and tailgate off restoration where everything is refinished separately, and this time including the engine compartment. Also, all of the body zinc hardware is refinished in the Stage 2 restoration. Another one of our tips and tricks when you're installing a stereo in a 60 series dashboard, there's some real challenges you're going to come up against. In the 80s, nobody had a universal stereo mounting system, so every manufacturer did it differently, and it can be very difficult to retrofit a modern stereo into an old dashboard. With the use of a custom bracket inside the dashboard to mount the back of the stereo, and that combined with a custom 3D printed outside bezel, we were able to mount the stereo in its din, the way Kenwood or any modern stereo manufacturer would have you do it, the stereo is now serviceable and we can cover up this last little bit with a pretty little 3D trim ring for a very nice fit and finish. We also built custom aluminum cargo panels for the rear and vortexed them so that there is a hardy place for all of the gear. For the seating in this Land Cruiser, we chose a set of aftermarket sport seats for the front, and the rest of the interior is recovered in matching vinyl. When we're putting these restorations back together, we have two types of rubber to choose from. Um, this is the factory uh, weather stripping, and there's also the aftermarket kind. Okay, so if they choose to have the factory weather stripping, it has to have the um, chrome tri trim reinstalled. Otherwise, we just use one that's uh, flat rubber instead. So installing this chrome trim is a little tricky. Um, you just have to kind of take your time and work it in place. And it looks pretty slick when you're done. Sometimes we redo the engine bay completely, um, especially on this one since it was a different color and had been on fire. When the engine was out, we went through and uh, scuffed everything. I. Um, made sure if there was any dents, I fixed them. Uh, took all the access panels off and redid the zinc and then painted all this black and made it look all nice. To top it off, we installed a new hood insulator and that kind of wraps up the whole engine bay and makes it look nice and brand new. So there you have it, Cummins powered stage two FJ60 restoration back on the road, ready to live a new life in Montana. Thanks for watching this episode of Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Wanted to give a special shout out to Gary Haas from Nowhere Trading Post for the super cool t-shirts that he hooks us up with of his Land Cruiser and others. Make sure to check him out and also check out our Facebook page at Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers, the Instagram feed at Pro Cruiser, and of course subscribe right here on YouTube for all the best Land Cruiser content on the internet. See you next.
next time. to do things right, don't you? Yep, yep, there's only so much uh, half-ass that can, that can roll. Yeah. We yeah. gotta make it good, man. That's so. true. <laughs> we can say that on camera. Can yeah. we say half-ass? Can, we say, that on can we say full ass? <laughs> She's full ass. No, you can't say that. You can't, can't say, say that. that. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs>